Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial, some industrial Lego. This is a cycloidal reduction gearbox. Would come from J.A. Penn, Sumitomo Industries. Now this thing, cool as frig, very compact and deep, deep reduction. On this particular one, 43 to one. So you put in 43 ripples in this end, you get one ripple out. Conversely, or as an addendum to that, you put, say, 10 foot-pounds in of torque, you get 430 out. Sounds pretty cool. How do they do it in such a small package? It's not the size of the axe. That's how you swing it. I'm showing off some big money, or at least uh, friends in low places. <laughs> oh, buddy got a $3,500 plastic hot snot gun, what, uh, what's on a robot, one of them 3D printers. Unfortunately, you still got to spend two, three friggin' hours getting the thing cleaned up on account of these sprue lines. Anytime you got anything with a tight fitment, she just don't want to go. We got to get that all cleaned up and we're just about at the couple hour mark. So hopefully we're there. Just tighter than a penitent nun on Ash Wednesday. There we go. We'll put some sex wax on there. Also known as Wiener Schleiden. Those two tonic types. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so what we have is we have the ring gear with ring gear pins. We have the cyclo disc. And we have the output shaft with pins. This is the standard. It doesn't look like an output shaft, but this is the sl slow speed shaft. And this is the input shaft. This is is an eccentric uh this would be an eccentric bearing but in this case it's just an eccentric cam so here's what happens we put the input like so we put the eccentric cam like so now this has to actually fit in there tightly now this guy goes like so and goes like so and should fit right onto the eccentric cam. Now when I spin this, spins free. Yeah, because it needs some sort of thing in there. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna omit, uh, yeah. Just to show you how it works, it doesn't actually have to work. One second for the second, second time. We got the cam in there, we're taking that out just for ease, but it's at the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna rotate this shaft through one full rotation. Now the cam is at the top. Now it's back at the bottom, right? So that's one revolution on the input. What just happened? We moved exactly one cam lobe. Now we count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 cam lobes on the cycloidal disc. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. That's not right. There's got to be one in the difference here. 1, 2, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I could take a lesson from my daughter. She can count all the way to 20. Unfortunately for me to get to 20, I got to take my socks off. Now we'll slide the output in. And we'll do the same thing. We'll go one full rotation of the input. And we'll show you what happens here. We get a tenth of a rotation on the output. It's being driven by those inner pins on the slow speed shaft. So super fucking cool. Just by having one lobe less than the amount of pins in the ring gear, we can get a very deep reduction. In this case, 10, almost 11 to one, something like that. But there is a problem with this design, a huge problem. And I will show you that. If you spin them a thing this fast, you induce a huge vibration. That is because, of course, this is offset. You have a big weight here that's turning and it's offset by this stroke of the cam. So you do not want to induce any kind of mechanical vibration 
or oscillation into a, a rotating system. You just, it's terrible. It'll tear itself apart. So in order to overcome that, we have to, we have to mitigate that through some design feature. Now, how are we going to do that? Or maybe we don't. Let me prove it to you that we do. Check this out, yo. So we got the drive input here. We're gonna just jam this in our drill like so. Okay, so this is in uh, fourth speed, slower. Oh, there we go. F speed four, so nice and quick. Watch this, watch this. Come on. So it's not vibrating. Why not? And this is spinning my thing in like, uh, like a hot dam. Why is it not vibrating? Because every commercial cycloidal gear has two cyclo discs. They put two of them in there and then what they do is they put them a hundred and they install them 180 degrees out of phase. So see how the cam here would be like this. On the second stage, what they would do is put it in like this. So they're offset by 180 degrees. Now when you're spinning it, the two cycloidal discs are negating each other's vibration. The other feature inherent in the design of a cycloidal drive versus a standard gearbox, whether it be worm and wheel or spur cut gears, is there is no virtually, virtually no backlash in the gear set. Of course, a gear set needs to have backlash in order to not chew itself apart. You cannot have zero backlash in the gearing. It will make its own backlash. That's just that's just the nature of the beast when you go with spur gears or worm and wheel gears. It needs to have backlash. This one, this cycloidal drive, it's very, if you look at this, it's tight in there. It doesn't move. There is no backlash. So this type of cycloidal gearbox is perfect for industrial automation or robotics because positioning wise, you're not worried about any slop in the gear train. Carefully, care, care, care. Yeah. Time for the vice. Ha ha! Check this out, yo. It's beautiful. You see, it's skipping every rotation of this guy, it's skipping over to the next tooth. We can see the ring gear walking around here. We'll just retain that. Look at this. Mesmerizing. And we uh, tap it, tap, tap. Ah, ah wood. Not just for birdhouses anymore. <laughs> makes a sense now it's offset 180 degrees so you got to pull out some of the pins what for getting her cockwise to whip it out that's uh yeah so that's the gear there that's the cycloidal two cycloidal discs as i said there's two of them in there to minimize the vibration if we only had the one in there she'd be uh walking all over the place let's say we get the input going see what happens look at that Dance, monkey dance! That is a thing of beauty. Th Vidi this, dear brothers. They've installated the bearing proper wise to enable us to see the information without needing to take it apart. Now, unfortunately, the way this was constructed, there's no circlips or anything. This was all press fit. So they would warm this bearing up, slide it onto the shaft, and then when it cooled down, she's on there proper wise. Unfortunately for us, Real tight to get a bearing splitter in there What for, for pulling it apart. I'm, I'm going to give her a try, but I don't really want to root the bearing because I want to use this as a 43 to 1 torque. Uh, like we'll be, <laughs> I want to test how much torque this thing will output because I think 
I think these cycloidal drives are what are in those Raptor torque guns. Like you can buy these things, they're thousands and thousands of doll hairs. It's essentially a drill torque wrench and it'll do track bolts, you know, it'll do 3,000 foot pounds, no problem for pipeline and this, that, the other thing. That's This is the latest and greatest. I wanted to see if I could make my own. Long story short, I don't want to destroy this. Right arm. No harm, no foul. Okay, and these are pins what slide directly out. I should have put a tool on them before I resorted to the ultraviolence. Mm. And then these guys, I don't know what the fuck those guys are. They ain't moving. Ha! I understand what's going on. The problem is you get locked into seeing the model as what's actually happening. And the model is just a representation. It's not actually what's happening. What we got here is this big shaft and it's been machined out of a solid chunk with a slot cut in here. A slot for the uh, cycloidal discs. Now the uh, output shaft and pins here is actually these guys. So these pins that fit in this bore are actually here. These are the cycloidal discs here. So these pins are what's actually driving the output. So one, two, three, six, six of these little pins. How much torque are you actually going to get out of there? Might be a fool's errand to try and turn this unit into a, uh, a heavy duty torquer. You see what's going on. So this input has these cams. They're turning these lobes, these cycloidal discs. And these are walking around. And then internally are the pins that are being driven to the output. So there is no need. Well, the thing is I can't, I can't pull that apart. This shaft has been put in after the fact. So they positioned the cycloidal disc and then the input shaft with the uh, offset cams. So that's going to be tough to get apart. What we would need to do is pull this shaft out first. And how in the world are you ever going to pull that shaft? It ain't going to happen without fucking it. So there you go. That's how it works. That's what it is. That is the typical embodiment. You'll note here, on bigger units, there's a gear lube, actual liquid. In this unit, the small units, it's grease. So... Yeah, once the grease is cooked, uh, this is basically a throwaway item. Very interesting gear set. No backlash. Very high reduction. Super, super low footprint. I mean, the thing, fucking brilliant. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.